The last request comes from Benimation, and we are going back to doing a Ralph Bakshi movie. I thought about doing this one for a long time, and this is as good as time as any against the YouTube algorithm. It's Fritz the Cat time, folks! <laughs> be confused with Felix the Cat. Fritz the Cat carries not a bag of tricks, but a bag of drugs. No he doesn't. He was a creation of a teenage Robert Crumb, who only managed to get the character published in Help Magazine in 1965. Prior to that, the character was more prominent within the underground comics scene, especially as an escapist figure that was more aligned with the counterculture movement and LSD. Lots and lots of LSD. Meanwhile, Ralph Bakshi was trying to get his animation career off the ground with Paramount. He and producer Steve Krantz read a few comics of Fritz, which led to them being interested in adapting it into a movie. But Crumb was reluctant to sign the film rights of his creation, so imagine his surprise when his then-wife Dana signed off on the project, leading to full-scale production. Sadly, the end result wasn't to Crumb's liking, and he hated the movie so much that he stopped the comic series by literally killing off his character within his own story. Damn. What did Bakshi do to make Crumb go all out like that? Let's find out by watching Fritz the Cat, and may God have mercy on my channel. We open in the 1960s with narration describing how these are the happiest and heaviest of times. We see some construction workers discussing a variety of topics from politics to family until one of them whips out his penis and takes a piss. I'm sure there's subtext for this, but it feels more like taking a piss on the audience's expectations. We move elsewhere where we have a theme song for Fritz the Cat, and boy does it sound insulting. Hey you fucking intellectual, you think you're so where it's at? Before you fill your mind with any junk and listen to Fritz the Cat. I don't know. Sounds like a real asshole to me. So Fritz and friends complain about the hippies singing protest songs because they're drawing attention away from their own band. And in case you still think that these guys are to root for, well... Hey, Diggs, get that chick man. Oh, over there? Man, look at that ass on Huck. Oh, yeah, what a baby care. I'm someplace I can sleep. I mean, I can cook. I mean, I can sew. I can do... Now, the majority of the cast here are of college age, but I still have to question some of the design choices. Like, most of the time, carriages will have the traditional cartoon animal look while not wearing pants. Yet other characters do wear pants. Some characters have non degraded legs or feet, and others don't. And for those wearing clothing over their tails, it looks like they're just coming straight out of their ass. And when they're not wearing clothes, it still may look like that. I just don't get it. Fritz and gang suck, though, as a band, and the girls ignore their crappy music to flirt with this Crow Man. For context, the comics were made during a time when Jim Crow laws were still in force in many parts of the United States, and crows were a common way to depict African Americans in animal media. I've read everything James Baldwin's written. He has a true sense of the problems of black people. I worked for Head Start for free last summer. Black kids are so much groovier. I went to a couple of Black Panther meetings. Which makes dialogue like this awkward since this is an animal world. There were these human twins earlier, but wouldn't there be dark colored animals then? I think that makes more sense than just have them be crows. I ain't no jive ass black honey. Who do you think I am? Geraldine? Now, there is something to be said about how people only care about human rights to steal a bit of valor, but there's something awfully cynical about how this movie portrays social issues and how people react to them. So seeing how the crow is getting attention, Fritz, voiced by Skip Hinant, decides to try and get the girls' attention by pretending to be a tortured soul, I guess, while walking through traffic because that's not dangerous at all. Somehow this ruse works, and the girls take up his offer to save his soul by going to this apartment with a meth party going on. He takes them into the bathroom and... Yep. This awaits us, my loves. This bathtub is now transformed into a space capsule of truth wow. and love. Just... Really now? Maybe a lot of this was in the comics, but with Crumb saying how the sex here was something more reflective of Bakshi, 
Maybe the director just didn't know better. And how stupid are these girls that they aren't questioning any of this? Even back then, I don't think anyone in their college years was this gullible. Oh, and one of the girls is named Winston, who was Fritz's on-again, off-again love interest in the comics. At some point, the cops, who are naturally depicted as pigs, come in to bust everyone at the party. One of them is actually voiced by Ralph Bakshi himself, and he just bumbles his way up while chaos ensues. Oh, and I was wrong. Other bird species exist. The fucking bird party's over! How does animal biology work in this world? Fritz shoots the toilet with a gun and causes the building to flood, while we shift over to a synagogue where the walls get replaced with trippy colors. We interrupt the Israeli era of war for this special announcement. The president, after conferring with the Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir, has agreed to send more arms and equipment to Israel, based on the return of New York City and Los Angeles to the United States. Either this whole scene was making fun of those who support the violent Israeli occupation of Arab countries, or they're suggesting the tacit acceptance of such by Jews. And I'm just gonna say it, the animation isn't that great. But that's expected for a production with a $700,000 budget, as well as studios that aren't as well known. Anyway, Fritz escapes back to his dorm at the New York University. His friends don't pay attention to him because they're studying leading to a rant about how intellectuals take away from other pursuits related to pleasure and women. So as a poet and writer, he's just gonna get out there and do stuff. From this day on, I shall live every day as if it was my last. Yeah, yeah, I must do it. No more of the dreary, boring classes, the dismal lectures, the sitting around bullshit. Wall boobs? So right. Are those wall boobs? <laughs> Oh my god, what have I done? Set all my notes and books and stuff on fire, and uh, now I can't study for my exams. And then you were arrested for arson. Story over. We transition to a bar, which might be called Blackface, because, ugh. Some crows are just flat out drunk and talking. Then this one guy starts fondling the crow lady as everyone's horny, it seems. Fritz enters the bar and is ignored for obvious reasons. But he does meet this one crow named Duke. Voiced by Charles Spidar. Easy for you to talk. You're a crow. I wish I was a crow. If I was a crow, I'd fly away, man. I'd fly away from this miserable town for good. I don't think he's aware of how hard life can be for crows in this world. Hell, Duke has to spell that out for him. I studied the race problem. See, I know. You don't know nothing about the race problem. You gotta be a crow to know about the race problem. You know what I mean? Do you dig where I'm at? You know what I'm talking about? And really, with something as deep-seated as institutional racism and how history gets told in a way that de-emphasize views from non-white groups, it makes sense for Duke to lecture Fritz when our main character claims to know it all. This is as close the movie gets to having an interesting scene because Fritz is getting a lesson of how the real world works and he has to get past banging girls. Of course, Duke only befriends Fritz when the self-loathing shtick empties up old table. I'm gonna buy you a drink, Cat, just cause I think you got coolness. But because Fritz still has some racism in him... Hey boy, hey boy, can I have a drink? Duke has to save his ass from being attacked. He then takes Fritz out for a little fun, like stealing someone's car, then going on a joyride with it. A bunch of random things happen, from nudity to drugs. But of course, the cops try to stop them, and... Remember, sex and nudity are the main gags of this film. After the entire chase ends with a crash, we slowly transition over broken items and mementos of a black community that looks like a destroyed section of the city. At least, I don't want to believe that this is a huge-ass dumping ground of some kind. There we meet another crow named Bertha, voiced by Rosetta Lenore, who I know best as Mother Winslow from Family Matters. Boss and then fine white cats came up to Harlem, spreading it all around Big Bertha. Mm. Yeah, that was before all those peace marches, sit-ins, riots, and dudes. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with no... 
Yeah, because in a society that tries to mirror ours, they'll mark anything as violent no matter how peaceful it is. Anyway, Duke takes Fritz inside her massive apartment complex, and I guess Bertha takes an interest in Fritz since she pulls out several joints from her nethers. Hey! Let's get that cat going on Pa! <laughs> and then Fritz freaks the hell out! This is then followed up by a sex scene between the two, which I won't show since editing out all the nudity is a headache. But I have to wonder, with a cat making out with a crow, Where does the pollen go? And I guess by having sex with her, he realizes how bad crows have it. So now he wants them to start a revolution. You have carried heavy burdens for the bosses. You have sweat your lives away for the bosses. The bosses, they ride around in limousines. Get the fuck off my car! Bosses, they're eating strawberries and cream. I get where you're going with this, but maybe you shouldn't be the one convincing them to do this. The cops from before see this small murder of crows. Get it? And obviously thinks it's up to no good. Naturally, Fritz tries to get the crows to help overthrow this society. Would you like to see a picture of my kids? At least the depiction of cops in this movie is accurate. When it wants to be. This results in an actual riot. And while Duke tries to keep Fritz safe, even disappearing for a frame, this happens. <laughs> Good job, Fritz. You not only caused a riot, your only friend at this point is dead. And as this thing spirals out of control, the army shows up. And instead of containing the situation, it's pretty indiscriminate killing. We even have silhouettes of some really familiar looking Disney characters cheering this on. get the feeling that this could be something that happens in the future. Sometime later, we see Winston. Not the same Winston from before, but the Winston who's supposed to be Fritz's girlfriend. She learns that Fritz is wanted by the police, so she reluctantly helps him escape by car. But then they discuss what they'll do next as they drive past more capitalist imagery that would make sense for the time. It's a pretty on-the-nose satire not only of American consumerism, but also of lax regulations about what can or can't be sold. And here comes the Nazi rabbit! But it's not Iron Tail, and he's not voiced by Vincent Price. It's just some dude named Blue, sporting Nazi iconography. He goes on his motorcycle with the same dead-eyed expression. This dude has got to be hot. Winston's car breaks down and she tries getting Fritz to fix it. He can't do jack, so he convinces this truck driver to get them to a gas station. But, um, this guy isn't exactly bright. Hey, shut up, kittens! Shut up, Hey, buddy, ain't you got any sense at all? You just gonna let your car run out of gas. I swear, these motherfucking hippies in New York. Well, that was pointless. Fritz gets mad at Winston about ordering him around, and she blows up on him for how selfish he is, and not appreciating what she's been doing for him. So he decides to leave her, and now he has to evade the cops on his own. This is when he runs into the Nazi rabbit and this horse, named Harriet, who seems to be in love with him, for some reason. But at least you're honest, the revolution can use a man like you. I have a feeling this is the revolution that does exactly the opposite of what the last one wanted to achieve. So Blue takes Fritz to the graveyard where his hideout is. We meet the leader, who's just called the Lizard Leader, and her associate, John. Their plan is to blow up a power plant, I guess for anarchy or something. After the meeting, Harriet wants Blue to go out with her. It results in physical abuse, and when Fritz tries to intervene, he gets knocked out for his troubles, leading to... Look, be glad I'm not showing what followed, because holy hell she went through something awful. At this point, Fritz is starting to have doubts about what he got himself into. 
some shady individuals want to blow up a power plant and raped one of their own, it's like they only care for themselves or something. She loves it. When you get right down to it, I mean, that's where it's really at. Yeah. The love you give is equal to the love you get. Yeah, we'll get back to that later. So, Fritz only has enough courage in his convictions by removing the dynamite, but at that point, it's too late. Far out. Guess there was no room in the budget for an animated explosion. Yet he somehow survives this and is taken to a hospital in Hollywood. Some of the girls he banged show up to see him, including not Winston Winston. And even Harriet makes an appearance since he showed a bit of kindness towards her. At least Fritz, at least now, Fritz can genuinely claim that he's learned something from all this. It's you get over here, and you get down there like that, and now you blind. You get under here. Like that. That's right. He was, a, he was a kind of tough kid at that, wasn't he? We hope you've enjoyed No Moral Theater, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that sure was a movie. Whatever insightful points it had towards societal issues, like racism, capitalism, fascism, etc., got overshadowed by the need to sexualize everything to the point where it came out with an X rating. What we got is a pretty cynical worldview of how people who speak out against injustices are only doing so for the sake of attention or getting laid. That's what Crumb objected to the most in this adaptation to his comic. On top of the insincere lumping of anyone on the political left to the most odious factions of the political right. It's a sort of doomerism that leads to inaction, in accepting that things will always suck no matter who's in charge. Crumb also took issue with Fritz quoting The End by the Beatles in a manner that sounded rednecked and fascistic. So despite the movie making $90 million and increased attention toward the Fritz comics, Crumb responded by satirizing Bakshi in one comic before, as mentioned before, killing off Fritz in his own story so that he will never be adapted again. That didn't work, but that's another story. That said, even though I wasn't too fond of the animation, the art direction is good at establishing the mood of the story, with gritty backgrounds that resemble something out of a newspaper, creative use of color effects during the trip-out scenes, these are all pretty eye-catching for lesser-known studios. It was an experience to be sure, and I can't say that I had a bad time, but I'd be hard-pressed to recommend the movie. Political commentary aside, it can be a drag given how unlikable Fritz is. He hardly ever grows, and given the ending... Ugh. Let's just put a cap on the movie by saying, it's a movie. It has some interesting history to its production, some trippy moments, and even a few funny bits. It's the sort of thing you watch to learn about the early animation career of Ralph Bakshi, and not much else. I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way. Down.